It's Tom here. I just wanted to give a little lecture on sexual dimorphism in the eastern box turtle, Terrapine carolina carolina. If you've ever read a field guide on this species, you'll know that they tell you that the best way to determine sex in eastern box turtles is by eye color. And they'll tell you that males have bright red fire engine, or bright Fire, fire engine red eyes, and females have dull brown eyes. And I don't know if that's true for the northern population of eastern box turtles, but for the southern population, at the very least, it is absolutely incorrect. This right here is Franklin. She is a female eastern box turtle, and she has the most bright red, vibrant eyes you have ever seen on a turtle. And this here is Norman. He is a mature male eastern box turtle and he has pale white pink eyes. So these are the two extremes of our turtles. Franklin has the reddest eyes of any turtle and Norman has the palest eyes of any turtle. We only have three males, so I only have three individuals to show you. This is Flip. This is another male. Notice how pale his eyes are. And this is Ebony. And her eyes aren't particularly red. So she has a lot more uh, yellows and greens and brown pigments in her eyes. For comparison. As you can tell, her eyes are still more red than his. The females tend to have more brick red, while the males tend to have more of a pink to pure red. Now this on the left, this is Enrique. He is our largest and probably our most dominant male. And it doesn't show up too well in the camera, but he's got about, he's got coral red eyes. So they're still fairly pink, but there's a lot of red to them. So the camera doesn't pick it up too well. This is Tortellini. She has brick red eyes, but she has the most pigmentation of any female, I believe. And Enrique has the most body pigmentation of any turtle we have. He's just a beautiful orange all over. I'd like to point out some more reliable sexual dimorphisms in adult eastern box turtles. As you can see from the back of the shell, on this male there is a flare to the shell, a slight bump on the terminal carapace scute and an overall kind of bumpy appearance to the back of the carapace. They also have an enlarged rear middle toe. The skin is very often highly pigmented with dark spots on a colored background, whereas females it tends to be colored spots on a dark background. That's not very reliable, but it can, but a turtle that you see this color is almost always a male. And the big, the most obvious sexual dimorphism is a concave plastrum. Males use this when mating with females because it allows them to get better access to the cloaca of the female and to mount her in courtship to get her ready to mate. And more reliable sexual dimorphism on females is, one, is lack of flare at the base of the shell. That's so that the male can properly mate with the female. A female that was difficult to mate with would be less likely to pass on her genes, so over time the flare disappears. So you may find a female with a flare, it's completely possible. There's a lot of factors that can influence sexual dimorphism. But you notice at the back of her shell it's almost a perfect sphere, or a perfect sort of circular um, curve. There's no bumps, no nothing. It's just straight from the top of the carapace down to the back. That is a strong characteristic of a female that, allow, that expands their body cavity and allows them to carry more eggs inside of their shell. The rear toe is small right here. That's because the Male uses the enlarged rear toe to hook into the back of the female shell right here during coitus, or, well, back, ow. 
back there, behind her leg, preventing her from closing her shell and crushing his tail and penis, because that would hurt. And the female has a flat bottom to the shell, almost like a plate. If you set it down on your hair, hand, you can feel the center of the shell. Well, if you match the ball of your hand to the front of the plastron. Sorry about being out of frame. Yeah, that was just a little rant I wanted to do because I see so many field guides and so many documentary or amateur and professional documentaries that say that is the best way to discern male and female is eye color. And in my experience, that is never the case. The females almost always have bright red eyes. Uh, wild males generally have much more red eyes than are captive individuals. I believe it's be a dietary thing. But back on the but using eyes to distinguish sexual dimorphism, males always have a sort of pinkish white hue to their to their eyes. Their eyes are more of like a like a coral to any anywhere from like a like a stereotypical red to a white pink, while females range from dark brown to bright ruby red, and usually with a brick red intermediate color. Yeah. Take home message, uh, don't believe the field guides. If you're in the southern United States, female turtles very often have bright red eyes. This is not just captive turtles. I have found numerous turtles in the wild that I've just moved across the street or picked up, put down. And every single one of the females has had either a very hardy brick red eye all the way to brilliant ruby. But the same also goes for males. But the males tend to have a, a clear, more pinkish red to their eyes. And the, but the more reliable means of telling a male and female apart is the females often have these high domed, steep sloping shells with a very circular appearance to them, and they do not have a flare at the back of their shell. And the bottom of their plastrum is perfectly flat. Whereas males, this individual is really a type specimen, have this wide sloping flare, this deep concavity to the plastrum, whitish tint to the eyes, and flat shell with a sort of lump at the back. Well, that's all I wanted. So, turtle out. Bad more turtles born today. So, that's good. Got eight so far. Yeah, turtle sexual dimorphism. Cool stuff, yeah. So, I believe this is directly related to their diet. So, I don't have any research evidence at the moment to suggest that. But that is my hypothesis. I'll probably test that sometime in the future. But I believe that since males have much more body pigment than females, see how dull she is and how colorful he is, that they get carotenoids from their diet, and those are fed, or those go into their pigmentation. So, any leftover carotenoids they have go into their eyes. So males probably in the wild seek out and eat um, foods with higher densities of carotenoids and other uh, xanthic pigments in order to increase their coloration and probably better improve their odds of getting a mate. Where females, since they have less overall coloration, they don't have to allocate as much of the pigments that they do eat to their um, scale and shell pigmentation. So since these turtles are in captivity, and I believe that the, the pigmentation of the eye is the leftover pigments, and that's where they allocate those, that they prioritize pigmentation in their scales and shell because that's most likely to provide them camouflage 
This is Ash, by the way. She is also a female, mature female. She's somewhat burned because she came from an area that used prescribed fire. Anyway, back on that train of thought. I believe that since males have more pigmentation on their body, when they get carotenoids, they put more carotenoids into that, and their eyes don't get as much pigment. And since the females do not have much body coloration, the pigments that they get go pretty much straight to their eyes because they have an excess. And since these turtles are fed the same diet across sexes, they can't forage for uh, anything that would separate their diet, so I believe captive turtles will naturally have... females will naturally have redder eyes and males paler because they're fed the same diet. I'd also like to show immature turtles because they have a different coloration of both the eyes and the shell. This is a homegrown um, female eastern box turtle. She is actually just now reaching sexual maturity because the immature eye pigmentation is beginning has just dissipated on her. So she will probably be ready to lay eggs next year. So if you can see it on this turtle, there is flecks of green and gold in the iris, and that's to better camouflage the juveniles when they're maturing. And she has just started to reach sexual maturity, so that has dissipated. She's just about the right weight to some little bit over 300 grams seems to be the ideal cutoff point. But she was fed a much higher and more nutrient-rich diet than most wild turtles and did not experience as much environmental stresses, so she's probably maturing a lot faster. It's probably closer to 330 for wild turtles. Oh, and uh, shell pigmentation. Immatures have this sort of dark shell color with sort of with yellow to bone orange and everything in between that coloration on the back. And they often have dark undersides and dark skin. The pigmentation starts to appear near sexual maturation. Some some juvenile turtles will have pigmentation throughout their life, but it really starts to amplify during sexual maturation. This individual is more of a duller colored female. She's probably the daughter of this one right here, who is a very dull colored female. So that's how you can tell immatures is they're generally slightly smaller, around below 350 grams, and they usually have very dull pigmentation to them. They also tend not to have shell rot. This is that female I was talking about. She also has bright red eyes. I'd also like to show you an immature male specimen. So he's a bit shy, but he is just starting to reach sexual maturity. He'll probably be there within the next two years. He's a brother of that last turtle I showed you. You can see the enlarged toe in there, sort of. And you can see the red pigmentation starting to come out on his skin. So the orange on his skin is starting to become more prevalent than the darker colors and the orange on his shell is really starting to pop. That's something you don't see in those females. His eyes are just starting to get towards the, the clarity of a sexually mature turtle. He's still got some fleckings of gold in there, but his eyes should be cleared up within the end of the year. So both of those, those mature, or all three of those immatures I just showed you are 12 years old, they were born in 2004.